Okay, last day of the semester, uh, but I didn't get time to go around doing this or asking you to do this question, which is um, derive the MGF of a Poisson, an important thing to do, so um, I guess it leaves me to do it. Random variable x is Poisson, where we'll let the uh, parameter lambda. This is the probability mass function. Just to sketch what it looks like if I was to sketch this function of some values of x. Uh, with the maximum value here of e to the minus lambda because at x is equal to 0 lambda to the power of 0 is 1 0 factorial is 1 so the value is e to the minus lambda and you can see from then onwards this function falls because this number here is fixed because lambda is fixed x is the only thing that's increasing so if we look at this guy here that's increasing but it's increasing at a slower rate than x factorial x factorial increase much faster than that and hence that's why you get this gradual decrease. If you don't understand what that kind of says, it's not really relevant for this video anyway, just thought I'd put that in. What we actually want to do is calculate this moment generating function. So here is the formula and it exists for all t. So just looking at this thing then, the moment generating function is a function of t. So when we look at this expression, it involves t. If it doesn't, if you derive something and it doesn't involve t, it can't be right. And also, yeah. So, and also, it cannot involve the random variables. Okay, cannot involve the random variables because of the definition of the expectation. With respect to that random variable, the random variable disappears. Okay, let's cut out all that detail. Um, let's just show you how to get this thing. Okay, well, it's always a good place to start with the definition. So we want the MGF. This is what's by definition, the expected value of is a function of Tx, okay? And because x is Poisson, it's discrete, and the values go from x takes possible values from zero to infinity. We sum it. And what this says is, you write this in, and then you times it by the probability mass function of x, which is Poisson, and I wrote it earlier. So here it is again, so I've separated it. All right, so I've got this. Where does this expression come from anyway? Um, on this side here, let's just rem remind you of the result if g is a function of x and you want to calculate expected value of function of g of x and x is discrete you sum over x of g of x times p of x so p of x is the Poisson g of x here is this function here so just write it straight down okay and that's what I want to calculate and I know that the final answer involves t because it must be it's a function of t so it's got to involve t's and the x's vanish so how to do that? Okay, well first of all we can look at this This summing from x 0 to infinity. Anything that does not involve x can come out of the summation sign. Uh, that doesn't e to the minus lambda, so let's bring that out. Uh, let's take this slow because I do not want to make errors. Neither do you. Okay, now how on earth do we get an exponential, because ultimately that's what it is, up here. If we look at this term here, we, we, we need an exponential here. Um, this is where you have to kind of think, what do I know about this thing in relationship to an exponential? Let's write down what we know. We know, and here is, uh, some people might call it a trick, it's not exactly a trick, but I've shown some students it for the continuous case. What we don't know is that the sum of a PDF comes to 1. Now for this PDF, we have summing from x to infinity of uh, x lambda, e to the minus lambda, uh, x factorial must come to 1, mustn't it, All right? Uh, this guy does not depend on x, so it can come out. e to the minus lambda. And so we have a formula because now if we take this over to the other side, that's e to the lambda there. And hence we've got automatically got a formula for summation. 
um, if you, in other words, got a formula here for summation of an exponential. So if you're really bad at memorizing uh, formulas, but this thing is given to you in a formula sheet or something, you, you've automatically got an, a result here. That e to the lambda is this expansion, this sum here. All right, so how can I use it anyway? Why did I show you that? It's because I've got something similar here, haven't I? If you write here e to the minus lambda, look, can I group this together so it looks something like something to the power of x? Well, I can. Let's do sum. If I group these two guys together, both to the power of x, aren't they? Because if I could do e to the t lambda all to the x, that's the same as writing the numerator. Okay, because you remember the rule, and I've done it on another video if you're rusty, uh, this thing power here just powers on each one, all right? Over x factorial of x equal to zero to infinity. But this guy now here looks exactly like this, except if we don't have a lambda. This is like our new lambda. So what does that say? It says, right, so I take that story because that's the whole point, that I've just kind of rewritten this so it looks like this structure. It doesn't have to be exactly lambda. It's something to the power of x over x factorial will be equal to the exponential of that something. So all I've kind of done is group these together. That's my group. That is my something now to the x over x factorial. So I know that this whole sum using this thing here, which you know, which is just a simple observation, is equal to the exponential, and hopefully you can see it now, that of this lump here. So e to the t lambda. And I guess that's the key bit, and now you can kind of see that the result follows automatically because now I just group them together. E e to the t lambda minus lambda, and that's the same as saying e common factor lambda e to the t minus 1. And we note there are no problems here for any values of t of this function. We're not dividing by 0 or anything anywhere along here, so we're completely fine. So that's always a t for any value on the real line. All, all that's necessary is that uh, this uh, function is differentiable up around 0, all right? But usually we're not concerned about that, especially in introductory courses in stats. Okay, so um, yes, so we've done that, and that's it. Can we use it? Well, remember, one of the purposes of the moment generating function is to use it to calculate moments. So now let's use it to find, now that I've got the M, uh, this uh, moment generating function, find the expected value of x and find the variance of x. Two key things that 